In this demo, we will see how we can rapidly understand long functions. The key to understanding very long functions is, first, get the whole view of the function by reading its top-level flowchart, then view the flowcharts of its parts, such as large switch statements, loops, etc. As an example, JSGC is a 500-line function. Let us create the flowchart for JSGC. Place the cursor anywhere in the function, then click the flowchart icon in the toolbar. This is the top-level flowchart of JSGC. For large functions, Crystal automatically creates the top-level flowchart. The code from deeper indents is hidden by the high-level symbols. The high-level symbols are indicated by a thick violet border. Let us click in the right part of the first high-level symbol. The corresponding lines in the code window become highlighted. Alternatively, we can click in the left half of the symbol. The code coverage window shows the code hidden by the high-level symbol. A click in the flowchart automatically closes the code coverage window. Let us click the Flow Only tab to maximize the detailed flowchart window. We will walk through the detailed view of the top level flowchart now. We start at the top. We read the first if symbol. Then we read the second if symbol. Then the third if symbol. When we come to the high level symbol, we click in the left part of the symbol. The code coverage window shows the code covered by the high-level symbol. The high-level symbol covers just a few lines and we can easily understand them. Let us now expand the high-level symbol with a double click. Now we come to the assignment statement. Here we wish to see the type of information of the variables that are used in the statement. Let us click on the left part of the symbol. We see the object's type window. The object's type window shows the type information of all the objects in the assignment statement. We notice that RT is a pointer to JS runtime. To see how JS runtime is declared, let us double click on JS runtime. The object's type window shows how the structure JS runtime has been declared. In this way, we can view the type information without having to go to the header files. Now, let us press the down arrow key to move further down in the top level flowchart. Let us continue to read and understand the top level flowchart. As we move downward, the if condition and the simple statements are easy to understand in the graphical form. As usual, the symbols that contain function calls are displayed in pink color. Now we are at a high level symbol. Let us click in the left part of the high level symbol to view the code covered by it. The code covered by the high level symbol is quite long. Let us move along and view the top level flowchart first. Later, we will come back and view the flowchart of the code that is covered by the high-level symbol. Let us use the cursor keys on the keyboard to walk through the rest of the flowchart. In just a few minutes, we have gone through and understood the top-level logic of a 500-line function. Later, you can try this technique with a very long function in your own code. Now, we will understand the code that is hidden by the high-level symbols. In other words, now we will conquer the high-level symbols. Let us go back to the high-level symbol that we had skipped before. We will create the flowchart of the code covered by this high-level symbol together with the while loop that surrounds it. 
we click the Create Current Loop Flowchart icon in the Flowchart toolbar. This is the flowchart of the while loop. The condensed view of this flowchart looks quite crowded. To find the level that will give us a simpler condensed view, let us first click L1. This is the level 1 flowchart of the while loop. Now, let's click L2. This is the level 2 flowchart of the while loop. Now, let's click L3. This is the level 3 flowchart of the while loop. Clicking L4 gives the level 4 flowchart. We saw that the L3 gave us a simplified, but not oversimplified, condensed view. So let's click L3 and go back to the level 3 flowchart of the while loop. Now, let us go through the detailed view. To create a visual distinction, let us highlight the for loop. Press the Alt key on the keyboard and then click on the for symbol. In this flowchart, we come to the first high-level symbol. Let us click in the left part of the high-level symbol and view the code covered by it. The high-level symbol covers just a few lines and we can easily understand them. Now, we come to the second high-level symbol. Let us click the left part of the second high-level symbol to view the code covered by it. The high-level symbol covers just a few lines and we can easily understand them. Let us continue reading the flowchart downward using the cursor keys on the keyboard. Notice that due to the limited width of the flowchart symbol, the statements have wrapped around to the next line. To make the statements more readable, let us click in the left part of the symbol. The statements in this window are easier to read. Now, we have read and understood the flowchart of the whole while loop. So let us go back to the top level flowchart by clicking the icon Switch to Parents Flowchart in the toolbar. We are back to the top level flowchart. Just as we did the recent high level symbol, we can understand the code covered by the remaining high level symbols. In this way, we can divide and conquer a 500 line function a lot quicker than reading the code line by line.